our changing earth. Our earth is not stable. The surface of the earth is constantly being shaped and reshaped by the external agents of denudation like running water, wind, glacier, etc. That is why our present day landforms are diverse and varied. Study at a glance. Earth movements, major landforms. Earth movements. The variation in landforms is the result of two forces working simultaneously inside the earth and also on the surface of the earth. The forces which originate inside the earth and bring changes on the surface of the earth are known as endogenic forces or internal forces. The forces which operate on the surface of the earth and bring changes on the surface are called exogenic forces or external forces. The endogenic forces try to uplift or subside the earth's surface while exogenic forces try to level down the surface of the earth. The powerful endogenic forces operating from within the crust are also known as tectonic movements or earth movements. These earth movements are classified into two categories. Sudden movements, slow movements. Sudden movements. These movements are those which bring abrupt changes on the earth's surface. Earthquakes and volcanic eruptions are the examples of these movements. The changes are so sudden that a part of land may be fractured, river may change its course and a new land feature may be formed due to lava eruption. Example Earthquakes Slow movements Some changes in the earth's crust are so slow that it takes hundreds of years to become noticeable. They are called slow movements. Slow movements are further classified into vertical movements, horizontal movements. The vertical movements operate vertically in the earth's crust. They cause large-scale upliftment or subsidence of a part of the earth's crust. These movements are often known as continent building movements. Horizontal movements are those movements which operate on the earth's surface horizontally. Horizontal movements are of two types, that is, forces of compression, forces of tension. Forces of compression. These forces act on the rock strata from opposite directions due to which the rock layers are bent up or folded into a series of anticlines and synclines. These forces are responsible for the formation of fold mountains. The Himalayas, the Rockies, the Andes and the Alps mountains have been formed due to the forces of compression and are examples of fold mountains. Forces of tension. These forces operate in opposite directions, thus causing a fault or a fracture in the earth's crust. The fractured rock strata either slide upward or downward along the fault line. The faulting then gives birth to new relief features like the rift valley or a block mountain. If a block of land subsides between two parallel faults, then it looks like a huge mountain known as block mountain. The valley of Narmada and Tapi are examples of rift valleys while Windyas and Satpura are the examples of block mountains. Major landforms. The landscape is being continuously worn away by two processes, weathering and erosion. Weathering is the breaking up of the rocks on the earth's surface. Erosion is wearing away of the landscape 
by different agents like water, wind and ice. The eroded material is carried away or transported by water, wind etc and eventually deposited. This process of erosion and deposition creates different landforms on the surface of the earth. Work of wind An active agent of erosion and deposition in the deserts is wind. In deserts, you can see rocks in the shape of a mushroom, commonly called mushroom rocks. Winds erode the lower section of the rock more than the upper part. Therefore, such rocks have narrower base and wider top. When the wind blows, it lifts and transports sand from one place to another. When it stops blowing, the sand falls and gets deposited in low hill-like structures. These are called sand dunes. When the grains of sand are very fine and light, the wind can carry it over very long distances. When such sand is deposited in large areas, it is called Less. Large deposits of less is found in China. Work of ice. Glaciers are rivers of ice which too erode the landscape by bulldozing soil and stones to expose the solid rock below. Glaciers carve out deep hollows. As the ice melts, they get filled up with water and become beautiful lakes in the mountains. The material carried by the glacier, such as rocks, big and small, sand and silt, gets deposited. These deposits form glacial moraines. Work of a river. The running water in the river erodes the landscape. When the river tumbles at steep angle over very hard rocks, or down a steep valley side, it forms a waterfall. As the river enters the plain, it twists and turns, forming large bends known as meanders. Due to continuous erosion and deposition along the sides of the meander, the ends of the meander loop come closer and closer. And in due course of time, it cuts off from the river and forms a cut off lake also called an oxbow lake. At times, the river overflows its banks, which leads to the flooding of the neighboring areas. As it floods, it deposits layers of fine soil and other materials called sediments along its banks, which leads to the formation of flat, fertile flood plain. The raised banks are called levees. As the river approaches the sea, the speed of the running water decreases and it breaks up into a number of streams called distributaries. The river becomes so slow that it begins to deposit its load. Each distributary forms its own mouth. The collection of sediments from all the mouths forms a delta. Work of Sea Waves the erosion and deposition of the sea waves give rise to coastal landforms. Sea waves continuously strike at the rocks, cracks develop and over the time they become larger and wider. Thus, hollow-like caves are formed on the rocks. They are called sea caves. As these cavities become bigger and bigger, only the roofs of the caves remain, thus forming sea arches. Further erosion breaks the roof and only walls are left. These wall-like features are called stacks. The steep rocky coast rising almost vertically above sea water is called sea cliff. The sea waves deposit sediments along the shores forming beaches. Earthquake An earthquake is the result of a sudden release of energy in the Earth's crust that creates seismic waves. 
the lithosphere is broken down into a number of plates known as lithospheric plates. When the lithospheric plates move, the surface of the earth vibrates and these vibrations can travel all around the earth. These vibrations are called earthquakes. Earthquakes are recorded with a seismometer, also known as seismograph. The magnitude of earthquake is measured on the Richter scale. An earthquake of 6 is considered as very strong and 7 is classified as a major earthquake. The place in the crust where the movement starts is called the focus and the place on the surface above the focus is called epicenter. Vibrations travel outwards from the epicenter as waves. Greatest damage is usually closest to the epicenter and the strength of the earthquake decreases away from the center. There are three types of earthquake waves. P waves or longitudinal waves. S waves or transverse waves. L waves or surface waves. Volcano. A volcano is a vent or an opening in the earth's crust through which hot molten rock, ash and gases erupt suddenly. Volcanoes can also form where there is stretching and thinning of the earth's crust. Summary The variations in landform is the result of two forces working simultaneously inside and outside the earth. The internal forces are called endogenic forces. The external forces are called exogenic forces. The endogenic forces are further classified into sudden movements and slow or secular movements.